This is the story of a city built on dreams of a better life in a new world. It is a story that began almost 400 years ago. It was a city that grew for 60 years, then vanished. Evidence of its existence and many of its secrets were buried by time and dust for more than 200 years. The ideas and issues first tested here are now at the very core of our American way of life. Welcome to St. Mary City, the first capital of Maryland, the fourth permanent settlement in English America. Archaeologists and historians worldwide recognize St. Mary's as one of the most significant 17th century sites in the United States. Artifacts reveal an important part of the story. Historical documents that survive add more details. In the spring of 1634, after a winter at sea, two ships, the Ark and the Dove, brought 140 English settlers to the Maryland frontier. When the English arrived at what would become St. Mary City, they encountered the native Yokomoko people in settlements on both shores of the river. The Yokomoko welcomed the English with their ships and superior weapons as a buffer between them and enemy tribes. After negotiating with Yokomoko leaders, the settlers acquired part of a native village living in the existing dwellings called Wichuts while building their new settlement. During the 60 years that St. Mary City was the capital of the new colony, some civil liberties we now take for granted were first tested and many seeds of democracy took root. Almost 300 years ahead of her time, Margaret Brent asked for a voice and a vote in Maryland's General Assembly. Although her request was denied, she was the first woman to raise the issue in the colonies. Matthias de Souza fared better. Once an indentured servant who had gained his freedom, de Souza served in the Maryland Assembly, becoming the first person of African descent to participate in government in colonial America. Religious toleration was a new and risky idea in the 1600s. Leonard Calvert, governor of the colony, was charged with carrying out the ambitious plans of his brother Cecil, the Lord Baltimore, owner of the colony, who had grand designs for St. Mary City. As a Catholic in England, Lord Baltimore was denied the right to practice his religion in public and the right to vote or to hold public office. But he would change that in his Maryland colony by setting in motion an experiment based on what he called liberty of conscience. Lord Baltimore mandated that here, both Catholic and Protestant free men would vote and serve in the assembly. What was official policy in St. Mary City became the first practice of religious toleration and true separation of church and state in the new world. At the southern end of the new settlement, Father Andrew White, a Jesuit priest, built the first Catholic church in English America, a powerful symbol of freedom and faith but the experiment would not last. By 1690, political change in England brought an end to the Calvert family's influence in Maryland. Soon thereafter, the capital was moved to Annapolis. Public worship of the Catholic faith was prohibited. In 1704, the chapel was closed and locked. Lord Baltimore's mandate of religious toleration would eventually be revived but not until the United States Constitution and its Bill of Rights became the law of the land almost a century later, officially separating church from state in the very First Amendment. By the time of the American Revolution in 1776, only plow furrows would mark the land where St. Mary's once stood. Today, St. Mary's is being found again, painstakingly, Inch by inch, the buried city is being unearthed and gradually rebuilt with equal care so that all who visit can step back in time. Back to the time when William Nuthead and his wife Dinah opened the first print shop in the southern colonies. 
Archaeologists have unearthed printing type and other structural evidence that made it possible to build an exact replica of their print shop on its precise original location, which is true of many of the structures you will find today around St. Mary's. In 1666, William Smith built what was then called an ordinary, a tavern where visitors to the capital city could eat, sleep, and share the gossip of the day. On the edge of town is a tobacco plantation of the kind owned by a typical family. Tobacco was the cash crop in the colony, and the spray plantation is historically accurate from the period gardens, plantings, and livestock outside the main house to the pottery, furniture, and household items inside. The beauty of St. Mary's is in the details and in the stories that shape them. The brick chapel is the city's sacred ground. In the fields surrounding the chapel, more than 500 of Maryland's founders lie in unmarked graves. Buried within the chapel are three early settlers whose identity we do know. In 1990, archaeologists located three 17th century lead coffins, the oldest ever found in America. A team of specialists, from NASA scientists to forensic anthropologists to pollen experts, was assembled to investigate what was called Project Lead Coffin. The research team determined that the three individuals buried in the coffins are members of the Calvert family. Philip, Chancellor of Maryland, and his wife Anne Wolsey Calvert. The smallest coffin contained an infant, possibly the child of Philip and his second wife, Jane Sewell. When the chapel is completed, the coffins will be returned to their original resting place. Here at St. Mary's City, people from three continents, Europe, Africa, and North America, found their lives and fortunes intersecting in ways they could not have imagined. The Chesapeake Bay and its tributary rivers were the watery highways that made possible their struggles to pursue a better life. St. Mary's City will long be a place for continuing discovery, and it will remain a place of honored memory.